Welcome back to the NFL Conversation here from Sports Not on our Sports Not NFL channel here on YouTube. Joining me is a guy you got to get to know. He covers the Las Vegas Raiders for us here at Sports Not, but he's also the NFL columnist, I should say, senior NFL writer over at Bleacher Report. You can catch him on TNT TV as well, where he talks about the NFL. He's also the co host of Silver and Black Today, which is a Raiders podcast that you can check out wherever you get your podcast. All right, Mo Moten is his name. You can follow him on X at Mo Moton, M O E M O T O N. We're here to talk about the 2024 Raiders. Mo, let's start with sort of what I think people have been seeing in the headlines so far through training camp and into the preseason, which is the Raiders quarterback battle. You have second year player Aiden O'Connell, who took over midway through last year when Antonio Pierce took over as head coach after the, the Josh McDaniels disaster and all of that did pretty well at times. They go out in the off season, they sign veteran journeyman uh, Gardner Minshew, Mr. Personality, and they bring him in. Let's start with that first. Where is that quarterback competition right now? Does anyone have an edge? And then tell us how you think it's all going to end up. Well, Antonio Pierce is keeping everything close to the vest right now. They're not letting out who exactly is in the lead. Uh, but both quarterbacks played well in the first preseason game in their own way. Aiden O'Connell was more efficient, going 7 of 9 for about 76 yards. Gardner Minshew threw off over 100 yards with the big plays, but 6 of 12 in his completion rate. But again, overall, both showed out after struggles at training camp. So right now, I would say if you're looking at it from the eye test, it's, it's dead even. But if you're looking at it from a logical perspective, you would think that in an even competition between a five, six year veteran and a second year pro, that the second year pro is going to get the nod because he has the potential upside to develop into something more. So in my opinion, if I'm calling it, I think Aiden O'Connell right now today will be the Raiders starting quarterback if the Chargers game were this Sunday. Now, when you look at those two guys, I mean, I think most of the folks watching this video who watch NFL overall know about Gardner Minshew and not only his colorful personality, but the talents he has in the field. He he scrambles around quite a bit. And when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he can be dangerous. When you look at his style of play versus what Aiden O'Connell is, how will that dictate whether or not Antonio Pierce chooses one or the other? What, which do they complement each other? Do they have talents that the other one doesn't have, or how does that all that that all look on the kind of landscape of of Raiders offense? Well, one of my viewers brought this point out that if the Raiders offensive line, which has had its struggles with injuries, Colton Miller out, Jackson Powers Johnson just got activated off the pup list on Wednesday, and then. Thayer Mumford banged up with both hands. DJ Glaze, the rookie third rounder, getting some rest with the ones. If that offensive line is still banged up, I think you want to guard a Minshew because he's more mobile and he can mask some of those pass protection issues that you may have up front. Now, if Colton Miller's back at full strength, if Thayer Mumford can shake off the injury bug, if they believe in Cody Whitehair, who will step in at left guard since Jackson Powers Johnson hasn't been ready, then you can go with eight and O'Connell hoping that the, the pass protection holds up because he's far less mobile. But again, once he gets into a rhythm, and we saw this last year when he took over for after he took over for Jimmy Garoppolo, once he gets into a rhythm, he'll rattle off several completions. Devontae Adams likes him. He likes the anticipatory throws. He, li he likes that ball placement that Aiden O'Connell has. So whereas Gardner Minshew can mask some of your deficiencies on the offensive line, Aiden O'Connell, if he have his, has an offensive line, then he can get the ball to your playmakers, including Brock Bowers, who's the rookie who's had an impressive training camp. Now, we know, and we'll talk about in a second, the Raiders' defense, which had a great back half of the 2023 season and is much heralded going into this year. But that offense, mm -hmm. there's a lot of question marks. We just talked about even at quarterback, the most important position on the field. Uh, they go out, they draft Brock Bowers. So now they have a bunch of weapons. They have Brock Bowers. They have Michael Mayer, who they took out of Notre Dame uh, two years ago at tight end. So they have two big tight ends. They also have Devonte Adams, who you mentioned earlier. Josh Jacobs is gone from the backfield, and now they're going to count on Zamir White. When you look at this offense, how much of how well this team will do this year is going to be on their shoulders? It's going to be a lot on their shoulders. And I'll even throw in Luke Getze's name in there, who has to prove a lot after his struggles in Chicago with Justin Fields. I'm not going to blame Justin Fields for all the Chicago Bears offensive struggles, Luke Getze has admitted that he has struggled to tailor the offense to the strength of his players. He's going to have to do that this year because he's got a lot to work with. You mentioned Brock Bowers, Michael Mayer. Jacoby Myers has been a pretty good number two since the Raiders acquired, since the Raiders signed him. Then you got Trey Tucker, who's coming along in, in his second year. 
So there's a lot to juggle for any for any offensive coordinator, let alone one that has a lot to prove. But it's going to be a lot on that offense. The Raiders' offense is going to dictate whether this team, you know, wins six to eight games or surprises a lot of people and wins nine or more games and pushes for a playoff spot because we know how that well that defense can play. We saw that last year, ninth in scoring. That defense has to pick it up. Antonio Pierce joked at the beginning of the year when he was hired for the full-time job that he wants at least 24 points. So we'll leave that as the benchmark there, and we'll see if the Raiders can meet that. I think they can with the playmakers that they have. Well, we also – I want to spend one second here on, on Devontae Adams because – not so much the folks who cover the Raiders day to day, but the national media seems to be enamored with the fact that the Raiders should trade him as soon as possible. What what is it with Devontae? Is he happy with the situation? Because the quarterback situation is fluid. So as a wide receiver, <laughs> you're looking to get the ball. And at his point in his career, he's at that inflection point, 31 years old. He's getting to the point where he wants to win. So where is Devontae Adams? What has he said? And what do you think ends up happening with uh, with the Raiders and Devontae Adams this season? Well, the Jets fans who are familiar with me want Devontae Adams to be unhappy because <laughs> they want the Aaron Rodgers <laughs> Devontae Adams reunion. But so far from what we've heard from Devontae Adams, he's happy where he is. He had, he's very upfront about his feelings and his thoughts about the offense. I remember last offseason, he said he didn't see eye to eye with the front office. And a lot of people caught that and said, oh, he's not happy in Las Vegas. He's very he's very open about you know what he doesn't like and what he likes. And so far, he's been very consistent with his message that he's a Raider and he plans on playing here. So unless unless the front office has a change of heart, and I don't see that happening. Tom Telesco came out the combine this year and said Devontae Adams is going to be a Raider. So by all accounts, he's going to be in a Raider uniform. But there's one caveat. If the Raiders are her 2-3 win team by the trade deadline, those those <laughs> trade rumors are going to heat up again. And there are going to be a lot of offers for Devontae Adams from playoff contending teams who need a wide receiver to make a difference for their offense. So we'll see where the Raiders are at the trade deadline. I would say as of right now, Devontae Adams is going to finish the season as a Raider. But things can change if you're thinking about the future instead of the present and you have a good offer on the table for your star wide receiver. All right, let's switch to the defensive side of the ball. And, of course, when you talk Raiders football and you talk defense, it starts with Max Crosby. An amazing year last year. Uh, could have really been, I believe, one of the, the defensive player of the year. And it's a tough race on that side in the AFC. But nonetheless, you see what he's able to do there. They now add Christian Wilkins. They sign him away from Miami as a free agent. Um, they have Tyree Wilson, who they drafted last year, number seven overall. Different, different regime there with Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler. But they, they've started to build defense. Patrick Graham there now going into his third season. You have uh, wide, excuse me, you have cornerbacks like Nate Hobbs out of Illinois who's done pretty well there. They signed Jack Jones off the waiver wire last year, right, from the Patriots because of some off-the-field kind of attitude issues. He knew Antonio Pierce from high school. They got along really well. He came over and shined. Look, tell me about this defense overall, where they are. A lot of people think they can be an elite defense, maybe a top-10 defense. I think they have the potential to be a top five defense. You mentioned Christian Wilkins. He's going to bolster that pass rush. Max Crosby hasn't had a pass rushing tag team partner until last year when Malcolm Kuntz had a breakout year. And then you add Christian Wilkins to the mix. So now you have three Raiders that can possibly have double digit sacks and 30 plus pressures. That's a good sign. That's that's for me. That's the crux of any elite defense. You have to have a pass rush. You mentioned Jack Jones, who's been picking off everything at training camp, picked off J.J. McCarthy in the first preseason <laughs> game. So he's definitely CB1. The Rays have been working on their cornerback, too. I think it's going to be Ja'Cory Bennett. After a rough rookie year, he could bounce back in his second year. The safety play is solid. Marcus Epps, decent. But Trayvon America could take a step up as he's looking forward to the 2025 offseason when he's going to be a free agent. The one question I have for the Raiders' defense is the run defense. Patrick Graham historically hasn't had any good run defenses. He only had one top 10 running run run defense in five years. Even last year, the Raiders run defense was back into the league, even though the defense played pretty well overall. So Robert Spillane, Divine Diablo, that front line, maybe Tyree Wilson gets involved. Christian Wilkins, those guys have to really own in on tightening things up on the interior because if teams see that you have you have a soft middle, they're going to run the ball and try to run the ball for 100-plus yards. If that's the one thing that can keep the Rays out of the top five in, in defense, it's the run defense. They have to patch that up. Well, in addition to some of these new players, they obviously brought in Tom Telesco. We'll get to the head coach, Antonio Pierce, in a second. But Tom Telesco comes over as GM 
lots of experience with the Chargers, and they never were ever able to get over the hump, but he put together some really talented rosters there. When you look at what Tom Telesco's done in the draft, what he's done in free agency, and what the Raiders still have some question marks, do you, do you anticipate that he'll stand pat with what he has and go into the season, or do you maybe anticipate the Raiders with some of the problems you're talking about, not only an offensive line, but also on the defensive line against the run? Do you think he could make some moves here be before the start of the regular season? The two problem areas I highlighted were the offensive line with the injuries I mentioned. Dale Mumford banged up both hands. Colton Miller coming off shoulder, shoulder surgery. And Jackson Price Johnson is activated off the pup, but he's missed a lot of the offseason program. So maybe you add one versatile offensive lineman just as an insurance policy. The one position I think they need to add to ASAP, cornerback. Mm. Now, after the starters, after Jack Jones, Ja'Korian Bennett, Nate Hobbs, very thin at, in the cornerback room. They let... I mean, Robertson walking free agency to go to Detroit Lions. They let Tyler Hall, their backup slot cornerback, walk in free agency to go to Philadelphia Eagles. So if Nate Hobbs gets banged up and Nate Hobbs has missed 10 games over the last two years, you know, who's going to step in? Do you trust any of your rookies to Cameron Richardson, their fourth rounder? MJ Devishai, who had a rough outing, as did Richardson in the preseason game. Do you trust those guys to step in in a pinch? Right now, I would say no. So if I were the Raiders, I would sign a Dory Jackson. He has one year of experience in Patrick Graham's system, played pretty well. He is available. He's not even 30 yet. I believe he's 28 years old. can play inside and outside. He can be your veteran insurance just in case Nate Hobbs or any of those top cornerbacks miss time. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch what they do, if anything, there with the roster. Lastly, let's talk about Antonio Pierce. I mean, one of the great stories last year, he takes over, of course, a Super Bowl winner with the New York Giants as a linebacker, comes to the Raiders after a stint at Arizona State in the college ranks, comes in there, uh, takes a team over that was in turmoil, that was revolting against Josh McDaniels and his, his sort of uh, old-fashioned and ineffective ways. He comes in, he kind of wins them over. They do pretty well down the stretch. They go five and four, and then the season's over, and the players really lobby, and I shouldn't even say lobby, they pressure owner Mark Davis to hire him permanently, and they went out. So Antonio Pierce gets the job full-time. It's a much different task, Mo, when you take over midseason. you got to heal people, get them together, and kind of finish out the campaign. Now he's heading into a first full season as a head coach in the NFL without a lot of experience. Um, how is that going to go, do you think? And what are his strengths there? And where may he have some issues that he'll have to overcome for the Raiders to be successful? I'll be honest. It's not all going to be rosy. I, I think they're gonna, it's going to be a mixed bag for Tony Pierce. There are going to be some lessons learned. He had a lesson learned in the first preseason game where he was burning timeouts while the oh, Vikings yeah. had no timeouts and allowed the Vikings to set up their third and fourth stringers to set up and kick a field goal, game-winning field goal. Now, again, no one cares about wins and losses in the preseason, but it shows the inexperience that he's going to make mistakes, especially it's hard for experienced head coaches in some time management situations. So there are going to be some – there are going to be some growing pains there. Hopefully him having some veterans on that staff in, in Marvin Lewis, Joe Philbin, Tom Coughlin's in his ear. Hopefully those guys can help him along. But there are going to be some snafus here and there that Raider fans are going to have to deal with. But overall, you talked about it last year, the energy he brought to that locker room, the change, the immediate change he brought to that locker room. The players rallied behind him, and that's one thing. He's a leader of men, which is a great quality for the head mm -hmm. coaching position, right? So he has that locker room in the palm of his hands. He just needs the experience, and he'll have that this year. Now, with any head coach, you're again, you're dependent on that talent. So as far as the X's and O's are concerned, he's going to lean on his offensive coordinator because he's a defensive-minded head coach. But there are going to be times where he's going to have to lean on his, his advisors, his experienced advisors, <laughs> for help, especially in game management. Yeah, and lastly, before we let you go, I mean, you look at the Raiders, and of course, the AFC West, the Chiefs have dominated for a decade almost, and uh, they continue to be the top dog in that division. You have the Broncos now with a young quarterback, Bo Nix, who looks like he's going to win out most likely. They're sort of in a mini rebuilding mode. And then you have the Chargers, who lost a lot of folks, but they gained Jim Harbaugh at head coach, and they have their quarterback in place as well with Justin Herbert. You look at the Raiders in this division. Some people picking them last in the division. I've seen other people pick them second in the division. How difficult is it going to be for the Raiders to build quickly enough to be as competitive as they can to try to keep up with the Chiefs and the rest of the division? 
I think they could be competitive. If you look at what they did on, on Christmas against the Chiefs in Kansas City, mm-hmm. <laughs> whooping them without Aiden O'Connell completing a pass after the first quarter, that's got to be a confidence booster. But I'm a guy of, of consistency. You got to do it more than once or else people are going to call it a flute. If you look, look at the last years with Patrick Mahomes as a starter, I believe he's 10-2 and two against the Raiders. So you got to be able to do it more than one time. But I do think they can compete with the Chiefs because of their defense. Now, their offense has to pull its weight. But we'll see. The Raiders' defense is going to be able to keep them in a lot of games this year. The Chargers have a lot of question marks. Wide receiver position is very shaky. Ladd McConkey, their rookie, could be their top receiver. I don't have a lot of faith in Quentin Johnston. We'll see what the defense look like. looks like. Jim Harbaugh brought his defensive coordinator from Michigan to Los Angeles. I don't think the Chargers have enough playmakers, and their running backs are very injury-prone. As you said, Denver probably rebuilding with a rookie quarterback. I think the Raiders finish somewhere between second and third with the Chargers. I think these two teams are going to be very similar where Mm. they're going to be led by their defenses. They're going to have to run the ball effectively. But the Raiders have a lot more playmakers. But keep in mind, the Chargers are playing a fourth-place schedule, so they have an easier schedule than the Raiders, which could vault the Chargers over the Raiders in a division. But the Raiders should be very competitive in the AFC West. Well, we'll find out real quick because the Raiders and Chargers in week one down in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium. So that'll be good. Well, now you're up to speed on the Las Vegas Raiders out there as we talk to folks all over the league about this upcoming season. Don't forget, check out Mo. Uh, he, you find him writing at Bleacher Report. He's a senior NFL writer there. Also, he's a Raiders columnist at SportsNot.com. And check him out on uh, TNT as well as his podcast, Raiders podcast, Silver and Black, today. Mo, thanks again, buddy. We'll get you on down the line. Thanks for having me, Scott.